All right, so today we are continuing with our data portion of the unit. Our big idea, remember, is collecting, displaying, and analyzing data helps us to solve problems and to understand the real world. Today, our concept has to do with demonstrating an understanding of how to construct or make and analyze a double bar graph. So looking at a double bar graph and figuring out some information based on what you see in the graph. So for example, um, here the question is, what do you usually eat for breakfast? Students across Canada answer this question. So we're getting this probably from secondhand data. Here we have two graphs, what boys usually eat for breakfast, what girls usually eat for breakfast. Here are the breakfast foods that we have listed, and the number of girls and the number of boys. We can see they've counted by 10, um, and they have bars for each. From these graphs, we can see that more students eat grain products than any other food, so probably cereals and toasts and such. Most students eat breakfast, but some don't. We've got some boys and some girls that don't eat breakfast. When these bar graphs are separated like that, it makes it harder for you to directly compare the data. So sometimes we use a double bar graph, which is really just those two bar graphs put together. It's two sets of data at once. This is easier for making comparisons between the data sets, so between the two. Uh, really important things when you are graphing, the title, um, it tells you what the graph is about. Without the title it's really hard to know what the graph is telling you. The horizontal axis on the bottom here, this one shows breakfast foods and then we have all of the breakfast foods listed. So there is the title, the general title, and then the specific title for each bar. The vertical axis shows how many, so we've got the title number of students, so we know and we can see that it's counting by tens. And remember, it's using the lines. We have to use the lines, not the spaces when we are numbering. Um, the line should be the part that is numbered. And we can clearly see that here it is the line, in fact, that it is numbered. The 10 is right on the line, the 20 is right on the line, and so on. And then anything that would fall between 10 and 20, we would put in between at its most... Um, accurate location as we can get. So if it's 5, of course, it would be right in the middle. If it's 7, it would be a little closer to 10. If it's uh, less than 5, it would be closer to the bottom, and so on. The scale is 1 square, represents 10 students, so we can see that one of those squares is 10 students, because when we get to that line, it is 10. Um, a double bar graph always needs to have a legend. The legend does tell you what the two different bars represent, what the two different colors represent. Um, might not always be colors. Sometimes it could be a pattern. One might be completely shaded. One might have um, diagonal lines on the bars to indicate. So if you don't have colors, it doesn't mean you cannot create a double bar graph. From this graph, we can make some conclusions. We can conclude that more boys ha uh, than girls have meat for breakfast. We can see, um, in fact, approximately how many. It's close to 30, but not, not quite, probably 28 or so to 20. So maybe about eight more or so. Um, more boys than girls have no breakfast. Or sorry, more girls than boys have no breakfast. We can see the girl uh, column is just slightly larger than the boy column. Um, so we can definitely draw some conclusions much easier when the two bars are right next to each other. Note that any bar graph can be drawn horizontally instead of vertically, so your bars could be coming across like this instead of up and down. Uh, it's good to work towards excellent conclusions that include specific information, for example, 17 more boys like meat than girls, and so on. Alright, you're going to practice. You're going to take a look at this graph and you're going to make four conclusions, if possible, more specific conclusions, uh, four excellent conclusions using the data from the graph. Press pause and try that now. Alright, so from looking at the data, we can see it's about Jasmine's sleep habits, how she's sleeping. Um, we can see that she's sleeping during the night and her total number of hours of sleep. So if her total number of hours is more than sleeping at night, then probably she's having naps or something to that effect. So on Sunday, we can see that she probably had no naps whatsoever. 
the day that she slept the most was Saturday. The day that she had um, naps would have been Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, we could see that she got the least amount of sleep on Sunday. It increased a little bit on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, she got a fair bit of sleep Friday, Saturday, both all three of those days had the same amount of sleep, although Saturday was all at night, and Thursday and Friday, or sorry, Wednesday and Friday also had naps. So those are some of the different conclusions. You might have come up with something different, of course. As long as it's based on the data from the graph, it would be correct. All right, now you get to move on to your concept practice. Page 263, 264, numbers 1, 3, 4, and 5, interpreting double bar graphs, so reading them and looking at them and determining conclusions based on that. Remember, as you're working, if you have any questions along the way that you ask,